So I'm going to talk to you a bit about legal and regulatory issues associated with the implementation of blockchain technology to sort of the financial and capital markets. We'll explore some of these issues in more detail in the panel session on capital markets a bit later, but I'll just give you some of the highlights um, for now. So typically, blockchain involves the use of um, a distributed ledger as opposed to um, having transactions processed or settled via a central body, which means a primary ledger. Um, now, the decentralized nature of blockchain or distributed ledger technology gives rise to a number of legal and regulatory issues. Instead of the users of the system each having bilateral relationships with a central body that's trusted to administer the system and which is itself possibly regulated, they would have multiple relationships with there potentially being no central body taking overall responsibility for the functioning of the system. And this gives rise to questions for the users and for regulators regarding who is responsible and accountable for matters such as maintaining the system and ensuring that, it's, uh, that it operates as it's supposed to, updating the system's operations or functionality over time, correcting erroneous transactions, and policing the activity conducted through the system, for example, to identify fraudulent transactions. These are all issues that will need to be resolved um, as these new technologies are implemented in a more widespread way throughout the financial system. It also gives rise to questions about who is responsible for any losses if things go wrong, and who does the regulator look to to answer questions or fix issues with the operation of the system? As Eduardo has just explained, care needs to be taken to ensure that use by a party of a system is understandable from a data security perspective, because instead of there being a central body responsible for the security of data passed through the system, there could be multiple copies of data stored on servers of a variety of entities participating in, it, in the system. However, this also provides opportunities to increase the efficiency of certain processes and could, for example, eliminate the need for re reconciliations of transaction data between the back offices of financial institutions or streamline the process for reporting transaction data to regulators, which is an increasing feature of current European financial services legislation. Users of the system will need to be clear as to the governing law that will apply to transactions affected via distributed ledger systems particularly where there may be a significant cross-border element. And this is more simple to determine currently whether there's a central body or counterparty responsible for the operation of the system. And there's also the issue of the finality of transactions affected via DLT systems. A key feature of blockchain systems is often said to be the addition of new blocks to the chain, which is intended to, to be an immutable update to the ledger represented by the blockchain. It cannot be reversed, and so erroneous trades may need to be corrected by adding new blocks to the chain. However, there's a distinction between what might be immutable in fact through the functional operation of the system and what's immutable in law. So, for example, in the case of the insolvency of a counterparty to a trade, insolvency law may apply to unwind transactions that have been taken, undertaken in the run-up to the insolvency. Clearly, transact such transactions are not truly immutable because the law says that they are not. Some market infrastructure currently benefits from legal protections to protect the finality of trades that are affected or settled via the system, their systems. There's currently nothing of that nature um, to protect trades affected via a pure DLT system. And that might be something that will need to be developed over mm -hmm. time. The attitude of the regulator to the introduction of any new blockchain-based solution will be key. Regulators may be reluctant to allow a wide-scale introduction of new methods for transferring value or clearing or settling trades in financial instruments if the legal and systematic risks associated with such systems are not fully understood. Or we only just need to see the recent warnings that the FCA has given about the risks of initial coin offerings. The current market infrastructure is well understood and fits within a regulatory regime that has been designed to cater for the involvement of certain types of entity, including central counterparties, central securities depositories, trade repositories, and other <coughs> reporting mechanisms. But it's hoped that, the, that certain use cases for blockchain technology could result in improved efficiencies for the operation of the capital markets, and hopefully the regulators will be supportive of that. So, for example, transaction reporting could be made significantly easier if the regulators have access to a shared ledger so that they can instantly access the same trade details as the trade counterparties themselves. This might eliminate quite a number of back office processes and functions that banks 
currently maintain at that great expense. However, the disintermediation of certain bodies would require changes in law. Certain EU laws mandate roles for certain bodies. Central counterparties are required by the European Market Infrastructure Regulation, or MIFID II, for the clearing of certain trades in financial instruments. Central securities depositories are required to maintain ledgers of title and record the transfer of title in securities that are traded on regulated markets under the Central Securities Depository Regulation. And trade repositories and approved reporting mechanisms are mandated for certain types of transaction reporting under EMEA and MIFID II. So in the shorter term, it may be that the quickest to market use cases will be those that do not involve the performance of functions that are currently reserved by regulation for certain regulated bodies. However, in the longer term, if the benefits of DLT solutions can be demonstrated to legislators and regulators, it may be that the regulations can be changed to create an environment that is supportive of the introduction of this promising new technology, and which actually improves the legal safety of such systems for the use of technology. Thank you.